Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yes. yes. Visible? Yes. Yeah. Dr. Shashi Mohan, uh, Dr. Nikon, it was, uh, I mean, really a very nice presentation on Parkinson. Uh, I really enjoyed, I mean, it's a thoroughly, I mean, uh, uh, something which one can always take back and learn from there. And uh, since we are here today to celebrate the World Samyapati Day on the occasion of 266th birth of Master Animan, so first of all, I would like to I mean, give my greetings to one and all, all the homeopathic lovers, all the homeopathic practitioners, all the homeopathic patients, and all the homeopathic critics also. Here I am, why I am saying the critics? Because they are the one who give us more energy to work. They are the one who give us the reason to improvise amongst ourselves. As Dr. Nikunj has said, that they will be able to hold the from the ear if you do it rightly. So we need to have somebody to give us a, a thought process to increase increase ourselves I mean, in our, my, our knowledge, our practice, and as well as the best of homeopathy, which is already there, but it needs to reach to the masses, to the common man. Unfortunately, there was a time when homeopathy was considered to be the science or medicine only of the elite people because they could understand it. Now is the time when, I mean, uh, this, uh, uh, on this particular occasion, when we are, I mean, spreading our uh, wings all around the world, and especially the IFPH doing a very, very big and great role to bring them, I mean, uh, uh, at a global level, promotion of homeopathy. My, my congratulation to the entire team and Dr. Shaji Kuliat for that, because this is what this was something which was lacking, I mean, in our uh, fraternity to take it in a wide manner. And it's been a continuous process for the last, I mean, so many days. It's been more than 226 days now. So it's been pretty, pretty good. So, first of all, I mean, what I would like to say about this uh, uh, in the case of, uh, I mean, homeopathy role in neurological disorders. I've been dealing with a lot of neurological disorders, like I mean, as, uh, in my previous uh, time, I presented on motor neuron diseases, which is supposed to be one of the incurable conditions all around the world, but homeopathy has got an edge over it where it has been able to, I mean, provide uh, the uh, uh, slowness or even the stopping of the progression of the fast degeneration which the disease is having a main feature as, and uh, gradually improvising the I mean, other conditions also, and overall it has improvised the quality of life plus lifespan of the I mean, uh, patients. Here I'm going to talk about two cases of I mean, young children who had been having uh, other disease, uh, Uh, I'm going to share that. Yes. I'm, I'm just coming now uh, by going to share that particular case. Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> Just first have a look of the patient. Uh, the condition when... Uh, is the screen shared now? Yes. Yeah. A 
having no strength in her legs, she could lift up. So the file is not opened. It was her, this was her father who had helped her to, I mean, lift her leg. This was in the clinic in the year of 2011. She could walk, and you can just, I mean, please observe the way she walks. She it will is limping. not open. Excuse me, sir. The video is not open, sir. Sir, select the video and play. She was unable to wear her slippers. It used to slip from her feet while walking. Uh, if the video I mean visible or not? No, 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 sir. No, no video. Oh, oh, just a minute. Why is it not being sharing? Just hang on. My screen is being shared, but why, how, why is it not coming? The video is not open, sir. Just a minute. Is it visible now? No, sir. Is it visible now? No, sir. If the video is visible? No, sir. You just uh, show, uh, we can see your screen only. If the screen is visible or not? Yeah, visible. Screen is visible. You just select that video and then play. It came only for one second and went. It, it was a purple yeah. color video for a few seconds and one second. Just two minutes, I think something. Uh, sir, share, open and share. Is it visible now coming? Sir, somebody is saying that stop sharing and again you share. Okay, so you share. You you share. Close it and then again you share. Okay. Stop. New share. New share. Is it, 
Is it coming now? No, sir. Why is not open? Is it okay? No, sir. No, no. Sir, no sir. Same like that before only. No, is the video not visible? We can uh, see your screen, you know, and then select uh, select and play with VLC player. Somebody, Ameya Satya is telling that. Select and play your VLC player. Yeah, yeah, so correct that one. Is it okay now? No. no, sir. Same like that. Why is that coming? No, like Do you have any net tissue there? No. no. Okay, open. Yeah, we already give the screen sharing option to sir. Uh, he can share. His co-host can share. No problem. Is it, is it visible? No, sir. Uh, somebody is saying that first open the video and then uh, after that you share. But open the video. Yes, I open the video and sharing it. It's not open. We cannot see. Okay, sure. 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 Yes. Is it visible now? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can see that video. That please connect that audio also. Play with audio. Is, is the video working now? Yeah, yeah. Working. Okay, okay, fine. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry for the inconvenience. No, 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 no sir. No, it's okay, sir. There's some technical issue here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, just please, I mean, uh, observe her uh, legs, the young girl, unable to get up. I think you can increase little volume. You can. Sorry? You can increase little volume about that video. Yeah. Oh, already handled. Okay. She, her father had to help her to come and just lift her leg. She is not been in a position to wear her slippers also. Now this was after, I mean, uh, uh, she has started with homeopathic treatment. This... Now the same girl, she got a little, I mean, uh, uh, support of that stick, but there's a limp is there, which you can see visible. No, no, even on the scanning, she could come and lift her leg.
and finally this is the beauty of homeopathy where you can see the girl has been put back to the normal see absolutely cured after a few months of the treatment yes now she not only can i mean uh, uh, lift her leg she can walk in a proper manner she been uh, ready to go to school and she could stand on one leg also excellent now this is the another case i mean i'll be discussing about the case uh, also this video visible no sir sure this visible now yes sir yes sir yeah 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 all right Now again, this is a young boy. Uh, I was called upon to see at uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, and he was on ventilator. I mean, earlier you can see that the tracheostomy had been done, and all the four limbs they had no power at all. He had been on ventilator for nearly I mean ten uh, to twelve days, and the tracheostomy was done. And when there were no hopes left. that was the time they said it okay let's we try homeopathy and this was in the i mean year 2017 november when i was called upon and i had to see this patient at all in institute of medical sciences this was in their uh, place and once we started the treatment after nearly 2 months the patient had came to such an extent that now he could walk with the walker and he is been in a position to move around able to walk even without support in a matter of from walker also he could i mean within a few days after the using the walker he was in a position to walk without the support of either uh, either in the walker or by from any support from anybody else so after since the patient belongs to bihar i mean uh, uh, he, he was brought back to my clinic after a couple of months but not he was not in a position to squat though he started walking but he the squatting was not possible for him to such a level that he could sit there as and when he wanted to this had been a problem you could see the i mean uh, he's been much better in walking but uh, he was not in a position to squat you could see that i mean there was a dressing wall still there on the tracheostomy which he, which was done before 
It was healing. And at last, young boys, he is able to quite easily. Now it was in my other clinic when he came after a couple of, I mean, months or so. And he is perfectly all right. And that's, I mean, uh, again, due to the homeopathy intervention, which they were not in the, I mean, initially used to think of that homeopathy could do anything for them. But that was the time after, I mean, facing this particular problem. And when this patient became all right, they have now they have become an ardent fan of homeopathy. Uh, now, before I mean, we go for further cases, I would just like to call upon uh, Dr. Sanket Gupta to say, I mean, uh, uh, about the efficacy of homeopathy, what has been seen in the case of COVID. Over to Dr. Sanket Gupta. Hello. Hello, everyone. Yes. Very good evening to all of you. I am Dr. Sanket Gupta. I am uh, uh, practicing since 11 years. And uh, it's a great opportunity for me to speak on the World Homeopathy Day in front of all of you learned doctors here, and uh, uh, especially on the uh, you know, uh, Zoomathon like session Sir, like I this. One minute. Could you please yeah. stop, stop sharing and then you can be spotlighted? Yeah, sure. Papa, you need to stop share. Okay. Yeah. Is it okay now? Hi, everyone. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I think if ever there was a time to talk about the efficacy and talk about the efficiency of homeopathy and uh, to pump our chest in front of the world and let them know what homeopathy is really capable of is now. Uh, believe me, uh, the way... Uh, homeopathic medicines have uh, excelled in uh, bringing out people out of COVID very nicely and even taking care of the post-COVID cases. It's fantastic. And that's what I would like to share upon. Uh, the... Sorry. That's my presentation. Can everyone see this? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. How do I remove this? I can, I want to start the slideshow. So homeopathy for me and for everyone has proven to be a boon for this new world order. Uh, the, the new world order that has been uh, infested upon us through COVID. And uh, I would like to pay my tributes before starting to Dr. Hanneman, who believed that Heidel is highest ideal of cure is to restore through gentle and enduring uh, uh, way the health of the patients. And uh, that's why he coined the term homeopathy and came out with us and uh, we came out with it. And so uh, COVID, as you, we all, we have all seen, uh, there are mild cases, moderate cases and uh, severe cases. I found my, uh, during my practice in the last year and uh, in the beginning of this year, Few of the medicines, Brynia, Alba, Ferrum, Foss, 6X specifically, 
zelsemium, uh, nux vomica, and rust tox have given fantastic results. I mean, brinia uh, in the initial stages of the fever and even uh, the body aches has given tremendous results. Uh, I would also like to, I mean, uh, appeal to all my fellow doctors that make sure that the uh, your patients do not jump onto the bandwagon and take the, you know, calpols and paracetamols to break down the fever. We must not do that. Our ferrumphos and bryonia and the indicated remedy is much more uh, potent, potent of doing that. And I've seen in a lot of cases that if we bring down fever, uh, immediately, if it is broken down immediately, it has prolonged uh, the illness and it has even gone worse in certain cases. So, uh, as we all as we all know, fever is the first line of defense and does form antibodies. So, we must educate our patients uh, along with giving the medicines. In the moderate cases, where we see a lot of coughing. Uh, even initial stages of breathlessness and uh, you see a lot of uh, body ache as well and fever prolonging for a long, long period of time. Medicines like arsenic album, manganum, aceticum, rumex, lachesis, again bryonia, and ammonium carb and ammonium mu when we see stuffy nose and uh, loss of smell and taste as well. Manganum, I, I would like to uh, point out that has really given me a lot of wonderful results, especially when the patient says that he coughs all day and sleeps well and peacefully at night. Magnum is the medicine and you will be uh, absolutely delighted to see the results it has given during COVID times. In severe cases, when the oxygen level goes drastically down, the pneumonia has set in, the glass opacities are there. Uh, patient is coughing and breathless and uh, even in certain cases we've seen uh, heart has got involved and people with comorbidities also land up into trouble, land up into ICU at times. These medicines have proven to be extremely, extremely useful and uh, not just useful as I would say a blessing to a lot of my patients. <clears throat> Gamfer, we all know, as Dr. Sankran suggested, uh, well, yes, uh, it, it was suggested as a prophylactic, but I would hear, say that when the uh, oxygen levels have gone down, uh, there's uh, hypoxia, even severe hypoxia. Camphor has given a tremendous result. I mean, a tremendous boost to the uh, oximeter and patient gathers, you know, it, he gathers some confidence by just seeing that, yes, his oxygen is improving. So th that still keeps him up, up a Because once they reach the hospital, we really do not have much of a chance to intervene and give them medicine and save their lives. I'm quite sure we can save we can save lives. We can definitely save lives and uh, during this time and we can definitely not let them land into hospitals if we are staunch with our regime and they follow it well. Aurelia racemosa was a wonderful remedy. I tried in a case. I mean, I uh, gave it in a case. Fantastic result. Uh, he was breathless. The moment he would uh, lie down and he would say uh, as if something is stuck here. I can't lie down even for a second. Aurelia Resimosa Maladincha saved that guy's life. He was ready to go to the hospital. He was, the ox, uh, oxygen cylinder had been uh, called in. It had gone down to, I would say, uh, mid of 80s also. But Aurelia Resimosa really saved him. Despite arsenic and carbovis was tried, but Aurelia was the one that saved him. Then Kali Kav, I've, uh, I've given in a lot of post-COVID cases, as well as cases where... Uh, Symptomatic in, uh, improvement has been seen, but the, the uh, pneumonia is still not gone. So ending it with Kali Gaab has really helped. Kali being a uh, king remedy for lungs and for uh, uh, sorosyphilitic cases as well. Kali Gaab has, has given a lot of good results. And so has phosphorus. Uh, especially when we see the patient is unable to lie down on the left side, is worse there. Phosphorus gives 
tremendous results. Antim tart and antim ass I've used in cases where patients have been hospitalized. Antim ass, especially when uh, there was a case when patient was almost uh, gone to the ventilator, he was uh, the, the family was told, and somehow we got antim ass given to the uh, patient and. We could save that patient. We could save that patient. Antimas was given very frequently. Antimas 30. Every few minutes, we requested the nurse to abide with us and she did cooperate very nicely and we could save that person. Also along with the auxiliary conventional treatment that was given, with, given there. And she was back home. She was a diabetic. She was a 78-year-old patient. She was diabetic. She was back home and still fit and fine and completely healthy. And on post-COVID uh, treatment as well, she was only on homeopathy and responded very nicely. Pyrogen I have used in a few cases where there has been a systemic involvement, septicemia has set in, multi-organ failure, and even in high fever. You see, I, I had few cases where, uh, where the patient's fever had gone up to 104, 105 and would immediately drastically come down to 97 by a dose of a dolo or a paracetamol. Checking the pulse and the uh, type of fever, pyrogen was the medicine that could break this cycle and we could save again another patient from going to the hospital. And eventually that elderly woman could come out of the COVID and uh, responded very nicely. And she's still with us. Very important is, again, post-COVID management, as we see a lot of pe people still complain, <clears throat> especially after taking steroids and uh, a, lot of, a lot of antibiotics during the COVID cases. They complain of prostration, a lot of weakness, uh, even in certain cases, the cough is still not gone. The uh, exhaustion is still not gone. And Avena sativa and Alstonia mother tinctures were wonderful uh, to have it in your uh, kitty and they gave great results. 5466 is a combination that I use that SBL made and that again takes care of all the uh, nutritional deficiencies that a patient goes through after an exhaustive viral fever like COVID. Fantastic results again. China, we all know, uh, has to be given when there is lack of vitality and the patient has lost a lot of vitality. Anika, I've chosen in a lot of cases where, uh, uh, even after vaccination, I've used Anika, where uh, uh, two or three of my cases, uh, they got uh, they got stroke. Uh, there was no history. Uh, the patient was never a hyper hypertensive. Yes, it is debatable that was it due to vaccine or not. We are debating on that. We all are discussing that every day. But yes, Anika was one medicine which took that patient completely out of stroke. He's absolutely okay. His BP is absolutely normal now. He was 180 by 120 when uh, he was taken to the hospital. A poor old man, 84-year-old guy. And he's completely fine now. And arsenic album, as you all know, again, for severe prostration and all. And even in post-COVID, as I mentioned, Kali Carbon Phosphorus, in post-COVID uh, cases also, even if the report is uh, negative, our work doesn't end there. Our work really doesn't end there. Patient is still not cured till the symptoms are there, till the uh, weakness is there, even the slightest of the symptom. Even if there is a loss of taste or loss of smell, as we see, it has prolonged a lot of cases, though they were mild. But even for two, three months, people have a lot of sense of smell and a lot of taste. So medicines there like uh, phosphorus, kali carb, and even ammonium mure, especially when there is loss of smell and taste, have given brilliant results. And I'm sure uh, this was just a small effort to come out with certain medicines that I used during my practice in the last year or so, and have given me beautiful results. And I'm sure uh, all of you must be seeing a lot of cases and just, I, I just appeal I just want to appeal and make sure that we all be very positive in this. We should be very confident in treating COVID and let all of them come to us. All of them. We can treat all of them. Absolutely. I'm dead sure about this. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for your patient listening. Thank you so much for the opportunity.
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sohi. It was a, a, a nice presentation. Uh, now I would like, because we have been talking about on World Homeopathy Day, the efficacy of homeopathy and what homeopathy has been done for patients. So we have got our patient, I mean, Mr. Amay Sate. Uh, please unmute Mr. Amay Sate. Uh, yeah, uh, he would like to share his I mean, uh, uh, personal experience with homeopathy. Uh, that what homeopathy has done for him and in his entire family. Because uh, the people, I mean, what doctors talk, that they, they've been talking I mean, from the, the medical point of view. But now we, if we hear it from the patient's point of view, that would be all the more better, which will go to the people to understand it uh, in a much better manner. Yes, sir. Mr. Amit Chade, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gupta, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I've been a journalist for the last 20 years. I run a website called sarkaritel.com and uh, diplomacyindia.com. And I uh, uh, disseminate news of, uh, you know, common interest. I have a column on uh, education as well as uh, uh, health for all. And I, I, before I start with uh, uh, my observations, I just wanted to share a small story. Uh, we were very small, I think nine or 10 years. And my mother was very fond of, you know, having medicines, you know, and anything, she, uh, anything happens to her, she used to go to the medicine shop. And uh, she used to immediately take medicine. So I just asked her one day, you know, uh, why you are so fond of, you know, having medicines? So she says, I don't want anything to happen to me. So I ensure that anything, even a small cough or a fever or anything that happens to me, I just take the medicines immediately. So I just asked uh, by curiosity, I mean, what kind of medicines you are taking? So she said homeopathy. And uh, I used to always see her, uh, you know, uh, whenever she used to get some time, as a as a efficient homemaker, she used to you know read a lot of books on homeopathy, and um, in the later years, uh, it, I observed that you know whenever we had some small issues, I had a fever or a cough, she used to treat us uh, using those medicines, and uh, it was certainly a very uh, fascinating experience. Uh, I asked her one day that why you do all this? We should go to a doctor. The one thing which she told me that uh, the greatest advantage of, uh, you know, taking a homeopathy medicine is that there are no side effects, which I think uh, the majority of the doctors on this panel will agree. But uh, now I can understand, say, after 40 years that, you know, uh, the kind of service homeopathy has done for the humanity is, is something uh, which is very terrific, you know. Even today, uh, you know, I had a very good experience. Uh, I have been associated with... Uh, Dr. Gupta for almost 20 years now. And uh, whenever I had any issues, uh, he was very forthcoming. Uh, we used to talk on phone also. There were times in the COVID times when uh, we couldn't travel or uh, we couldn't go to his clinic. But uh, he was always available 24 hours for even some small issue when uh, everybody was frightened, you know, even a small cough or a small fever was like treated as uh, there's something which has happened to us or maybe we have catch COVID. So uh, I think uh, one more observation which I would like to share is that I think uh, in today's world when, you know, COVID-19 has uh, uh, captured the whole uh, world with, uh, you know, a lot of fear. I think use of homeopathy to treat COVID, uh, it needs to be promoted. This is, this is one of my observations, I think, which is not happening. And uh, there is one more thing which uh, uh, just came to my mind that uh, could homeopathy be an alternative of, uh, you know, taking a vaccine to uh, basically uh, generate antibodies? This is, this is one of the questions which is like agitating me since uh, I heard this presentation from uh, Dr. Sanket Gupta, it was, it was something very brilliant, you know, I, I remember when I was small, I used to uh, uh, listen to all these medicines, Arnica, Calcarea, Foss, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it properly, but I often used to hear this uh, when my mother used to do all these small medicines to treat small, uh, uh, small problems. Uh, lastly, uh, I think uh, more efforts needs to be done uh, from in the world of homeopathy to, you know, treat this COVID-19 because this is becoming a major problem now. 
and uh, could this be a alternative to uh, you know taking vaccines i think i should end here and uh, over to dr ak gupta doctor i mean uh, thank you mr amit hade it has been very nicely that you have come in brought in that you have been brought in i mean up with a really right from your childhood <clears throat> and today 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 you have been talking about uh, the alternative of vaccination in the form of homeopathy yes we are already working on that and the entire world is looking forward to but what we have been saying that i mean homeopathic people like i mean so far uh, many of homeopaths who have been i mean uh, in the category of uh, vaccine to be vaccinated they have not got themselves vaccinated because of this reason only they 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 have their own i mean uh, uh, feelings that they those so called antibodies are being produced by i mean homeopathic medicines by the constitutional medicines by giving your own immunity booster which has worked i mean uh, tremendously uh, here i would like to have another i mean uh, 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 testimony of a particular patient of ours uh, who had got a very tremendous experience of i mean uh, with homeopathy uh, i would like to bring him over there sure uh i we need to come in bring it uh Uh, is it visible? Yes, visible. No sound. No sound. Is it audible? Visible now? Yes, visible. No sound. No sound. Uh, uh, there is a problem with the sound, perhaps. I mean, how do we increase? Can, can we increase the sound? Okay, we'll do that also. I mean, I'll see that if we can put him on the line directly. Is this visible? Yes, Hello? visible, visible, visible. Audible also? No audio. No audio? No audio. No audio. Why is it so? Yeah, 
No sound, sir. No sound, again. No sound. I don't know what's the problem. Uh, I think it's not audible at all. No sound, no sound. Okay, sorry, I'm so sorry. I regret that. I mean, this is inc it's an inconvenience. What we'll do is we'll stop it there and, and, uh, Uh, is, is it visible this? No? So share with sound. They are saying that share with sound. Uh, I think, but I mean, there was some issue. It was not coming. Sound was not coming over there. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I really feel so bad about it that there have been uh, some glitches on that. But uh, today, in the, this, in the morning, I, as uh, Dr. Shaji also knows, that we were having a uh, World Homeopathy Day celebration in India and by the CCRH. So where, where we had, I mean, uh, uh, the theme had been the roadmap of homeopathy towards integration. So what I would like to, I mean, uh, uh, just talk on that, that the paper presented, I mean, by me uh, today, I'm just going to share with the, I mean, uh, so that we can have a quick uh, recapture. Like this is integra integration of medical systems beneficial in clinical care. This has been the order of the day. Even the WHO has also started saying it, that the, I mean, especially in the COVID period of time, that no, I mean, uh, allopathic medicine alone has not been enough to tackle all the cases. Even in China, they they took the help of their traditional medicines to treat and cure, I mean, uh, COVID. So here in uh, our country, arsenic album has been given at a, I mean, world level as a preventive as well as curative. Also, as Dr. Sangeet Gupta has given a couple of medicines, but we. As, a, as on date, we do need our, I mean, integration of uh, various medical systems for the benefit of the patients. As, as I call, like, I mean, uh, this thing, collaboration between health professionals to provide complete treatment to patients and improve overall well-being is called integrated healthcare. It is an approach characterized by high degree of collaboration and communication among health professionals, what makes integrated health care unique is the sharing of information among the team members related to patient care and the establishment of a comprehensive treatment plan to address the biological and social needs of the patient. This is the integrative health where we can see the conventional medicine, we have the lifestyle medicine, we have the complementary alternative medicine and the self-care. The amalgamation of all is going to give us the integrative health. Integrative medicine is a holistic medical discipline which takes into account the lifestyle habits of a patient, the physician works, to treat the whole person rather than just the disease, the mind, body, and souls of a patient are taken into consideration to promote 
healing and well-being. As you all know, that all systems have got something to offer, and they are beneficial to, I mean, uh, uh, the humankind for helping the diseases. But every system has got its limitations also. Now, this is the, I mean, uh, basically, you can say the compilation of total health system where we have biological medicine, we have got an emotional therapy, spiritual practices are there, ordinary medicines are there, healing therapies, uh, holistic therapies are there, nutritional supplements are also required, surgery, invasive procedures are also required, physical modalities are to be looked into, mind and body medicine is again a very important part, counseling is taking, I mean, uh, uh, it's a big uh, time requirement nowadays, especially in the COVID period, people have been fed up. There have been a lot of people, uh, those who have been uh, constrained because of the lockdown. So they have developed a lot of I mean, anxiety, fear, and depression. So their counseling I mean, uh, is a very integral part. Then, then we need a biofeedback, then the stress management, the consciousness awareness, and energy methods. They are all things which we have to look into and integrate to have the ultimate uh, holistic approach for the health for everyone. Need for intervention of medical system. As I said, no medical system is complete in itself and all have certain limitations. But the day, the time when we are able to understand our limitations and keep ourselves open-minded and giving a chance or giving a, I mean, a opportunity to some other I mean, a mode of system of medicine to come and intervene for the betterment of uh, patients. Better treatment options for the patients, many unwanted deaths can be avoided. So far, what is happening, the patients, those who have been I mean, uh, admitted in the hospital for chronic diseases for days, weeks, and months, like as I was I mean, taking, telling you about that case of a uh, young boy of I mean, uh, GV syndrome, who was in the hospital, who was on, uh, in a uh, ventilator, but despite of I mean, being there, he was not able to get out of it. So after intervening with homeopathic system of medicine, the ultimately you could see the results and now he's absolutely hale and hearty and um, moving around. And uh, if we all understand the intricacies of other systems of medicine, I think we can save a lot many patients from the misery of unnecessary medication or prolonged medication in one system of medicine. Better healthcare for the nation at large and economically while viable healthcare. These, these are the need of um, uh, integration of medical system. And now looking for the domain where we have the best of results. Best of results can be seen in the long-standing and non-responsive chronic diseases and so-called incurable diseases in modern medicine, as we've been talking about the motor neuron disease and other things like avoidable surgical cases, like my, my, most of the patients, young children, they've been uh, subjected to tonsillectomy at a very early age because of recurrent sore throat or recurrent I mean, infection. Whereas if those children are the patients treated from homeopathy point of view right from beginning, far less number of patients, would, I mean, children would require the need of tonsillectomy or they have to undergo the uh, I mean, uh, knife of a surgeon. Now, again, autoimmune disease is the one particular uh, section where we need to have the integration where, I mean, uh, those diseases are not so easy to be treated by any particular I mean, uh, mode of system of medicine. But if we couple up, I mean, uh, two systems or three systems in case of need, as per the need, it could be, I mean, uh, very beneficial for the, I mean, patients. Even infectious disease where, I mean, uh, a short, short conventional medicine therapy has not been achieved, like as in the recent uh, cases of pandemic of COVID-19, that, I mean, uh, uh, sometimes they would say the antiviral drug, the remedy is the only medicine for, I mean, these patients, or then they started with talking about HCQ, then they're talking about uh, giving medicine like uh, anti-AIDS and all that. 
so they were also i mean not knowing what is happening and what exactly is going to help so in those cases when they were experimenting on their own had they allowed the i mean other system medicine like homeopathy and ayurveda i am sure far number of um, and less number would have gone to the kind of casualties and the deaths which have occurred unfortunately though i mean uh, uh, of late this thing has been taken uh, by the government of india that they have allowed i mean uh, to uh, in few cases to treat as an adjuvant therapy the post operative complications and management again uh, this is the one domain where i mean the integration of medicine is going to be very very helpful there is a strong uh, research evidence that the integration of homeopathy into the medical practices can reduce the use of hazardous group of drugs not in one or two or many I mean as we seen in number of cases where i um, mean homeopathy has helped beautifully integration of homeopathy with conventional medicine at akil oems we have seen uh, many patients showing very good results in the cases of chronic kidney disease and undergoing dialysis patients having uh, altered blood pressure due to the i mean dialysis either high or low and due to which the procedure had to be abandoned without completion and after uh, introducing the homeopathic medicines in constitutional and ss cases patients were able to go through dialysis successfully and quite a good number of patients could reduce the frequency of dialysis also and maintained on homeopathic treatment in conjunction integration of homeopathy has been very very beneficial in the cases of cancer patients where uh, they had been facing problems and complications due to the side effects of chemotherapy and radiotherapy many patients were not able to tolerate these interventions due to the symptoms like headache vertigo vomiting dizziness and dullness and after giving the homeopathic medicines those patients could easily tolerate these therapies successfully in such cases the complement complementary effect of homeopathy has been acknowledged by the patients in the com uh, completing their conventional treatment and therapies do not claiming to cure the case cancer of the those patient but certainly homeopathy has helped them a great deal to go through and complete uh, their conventional or specialized course of treatment as i told that it is obvious which was established in 1999 that omil institute of homeopathy and allied medical sciences uh, is an been a pioneer in integration of medical system for the welfare of patients and it was the year 99 that i mean if you could see that uh, the uh, very i mean uh, prestigious paper of uh, india the hindustan time had given that this the for the very first time invest the integrated medical services will be given under one roof the services of experts of various system will remain available round the clock at the institute of obm this is in hindi that the same thing that i mean uh, there been a new concept which has been uh, started by the ekg obms and uh, these were the few i mean uh, <clears throat> uh, um, releases which we came on the newspaper cuttings as well the concept was appreciated but since it was a private one it was i was the first one to start with this and people had liked the idea but when it came from the other practitioners there had been some problems uh, though uh, dr arun beshar was there who the director of health services after seeing i mean that uh, conjunction of treatment which we were trying to give he was so impressed with that uh, concept he introduced the same thing in all over delhi all over delhi all allopathic hospitals they started homeopathic dispensaries for the patients to come and have the homeopathic treatment also what happened 
Sorry. As it says, uh, since no medical system is foolproof, we wanted to provide treatment combining two or more systems of medicine. And due to that concept only, we got our name in uh, Limca Book of Records. Now, going for this uh, integration, there are a lot of challenges which are going to be there, which I have experienced in my I mean, uh, 22 years of practice with this integration. First of all, we need to have a like-mindedness of the physicians of other systems of medicine. Ego hassles and the partial and inadequate knowledge and biased opinions. By few people causes difficulty in carrying on uh, the integration. And recently, of late, we've been seeing the unethical and biased advices from pathologists and radiologists, et cetera. Like you might have been seeing that the, I mean, we send our patient for investigation for some radiology uh, examinations like uh, ultrasound or CAT scan, CT scan or MRI. So after the record, I mean, uh, report, they advise review after three weeks course of antibiotics or such and such. So not this particular, I mean, uh, opinion of that radiologist makes uh, creates a doubt in the patient's mind, the one who was going under homeopathic treatment, he was improving also, feels that he has been advised by the radiologist to go in for antibiotics. So this is the practice which should not be there. Same is the case in the pathologist, like you see there's some culture are there. So it has been reviewed after the course of antibiotic. Whereas, I mean, um, uh, from this forum of international, I would like to say that neither the pathologist nor the radiologist have any authority or any business to make this kind of a suggestion or opinions to the patient in their report. They're, they're supposed to be giving their findings in the form of I mean, radiological reports or in the form of pathological reports. What has to be done and what has not to be done is not their problem and sir, not domain. Uh, okay, Gupta ji, thank you, sir. sir. Because you know, another country, our Colombia is waiting. That's why. Okay, all right, all right. I'm just going to finish off. I mean, uh, actually, we spend, I mean, spend a lot of time. I mean, uh, because of technical problems. Uh, okay, no yeah, um, and yeah. there have been some some personal monetary monetary issues of fear of losing patient of client is also something which is wrong. Now. What is the solution? It is the past. I can do things which you cannot do, and you can do things which I cannot. But together, we can do great things. This is what Mother Teresa has been saying, and this is what is the need of the art, which I feel in the form of integration. When we talk of the medical system, we all can help the humanity. With this, I would like to say thank you very much, and uh, thank you for uh, being, uh, patient hearing and bearing with me the problems. Thank you very much. And over to Colombia, looking forward for other things too. Thank you so much, uh, Gupta ji and uh, Sanket Gupta ji. It's very good presentation. Uh, very good uh, information also. Thank you so much because uh, our 